and welcome back to the Mecca Sports Podcast. I'm Brandon Miller. And I'm George Gallo. And this is the, the Mecca, Mecca Sports Podcast. So, George, how's everything been? So, what's going on, man? Uh, I'm good. We were online last time. Uh, I'm glad to be back in the studio. Glad yeah, to be back in person. A yeah, I, I, I enjoy this in-person podcast better than online. Right. So, um... I heard you went to the Yankee game last night. How was that? I did. Yankees beat the Marlins three to two yesterday. You know, the subway was a mess yesterday. Oh, I'm sure. Time again. Yeah. There was actually a lot of people there. It was almost a sellout crowd yesterday on a Tuesday night. Well, yeah. I mean, it's still early in the season. Yeah. It's enough to where people still want to get to the games. But um, how? It, so you guys took the you guys took the train there. We took the train in. You know, took the subway to like Grand Central. All this other stuff. It was a mess. But you know, we got there by like. The second, I think it was the bottom of the second inning. Okay. Because the lines to get in were crazy long. Yeah. It's it's, ridiculous. It's crazy. And it's not, it was beautiful out here. Yeah. That's also plays a factor weather. I mean, you saw so many people there probably because, you know, it was like 70 degrees. Yeah. So nice out. But, you know, the Knicks, both got the Knicks merch on right now. Yeah. I was, uh, I had both games on and I had the Island and Rangers game. So it was a busy night for sports fans last night. Um, Knicks had a great game. Uh, Listen, OGN and Obi, man. Him and Jalen Brunson, they could take this team to the Eastern Conference Finals, yeah, I believe. Shot. They're definitely they, yeah, a shot. Very good. Hart, Hartenstein, Robinson, uh, I, it, McBride's even. Now he's coming off the bench, so now it's more help off the bench. Burks is not in the rotation anymore. I, I, it's just really fun to watch them play right now. Yeah, Brunson had his 10th 40-piece of the season yesterday. <sighs> so that's, Unreal. That's more than Donovan. I think it was more than Donovan Mitchell and I think some other player. I want to say it was... It's all him and him and Luca are the only two players with, with that, above ten games right. with forty plus points. That's, that's the yeah. two best guards in the league. One in one represents the East, one represents the West. Yeah, that's something, man. I mean, I would never expect that to say a Knicks guard is a top two guard in the league. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and the fact that they played with each other too. They were they were just on the same team a couple of years ago. So that could, it, that could have been something. Let me so think. yeah, but I'm very glad that Jalen Brunson is Nick. Um DiVincenzo had a nice half court shot. I saw that. That was cool. Yeah, they had, honestly, some nice highlights from the game yesterday. Not yeah, bad. OG had a few dunks. He, was, he had a few posters. I mean, it was a good game. It was a very good game to watch. And we, we needed to beat Chicago because uh, they're down a few players. Right. And now, obviously, sitting at third in the Eastern Conference, I think a game ahead of the Magic and then the game behind the Bucks. Yeah, the Magic lost last night. Um, Giannis. Giannis, Giannis is out. Right. He didn't tear. He didn't tear anything. But it He's just a strain. Good. It does not look good. Probably will, probably will be out the remainder of the regular season. So that helps the Knicks, the Knicks uh, a, a lot with seeding too. You no, know, and the Bucks have to play the Magic two more times before the season ends, as well as I think they have to play the Sixers as well. So they don't have an easy schedule coming up. We obviously have to play the Celtics once, but the Celtics yeah. didn't play all their starters. We play, yesterday. we play the Celtics tomorrow. Correct, and you know they started Xavier Tillman yesterday. Yeah. So that's starting to. Give me signs that they're starting to ease out some of their players. Yeah, I mean, look how look how far ahead they're of the they race for the first seed. Starters. I mean, they they I saw yesterday the first game this season where they didn't attempt a single free throw. So it, it just goes to show you they're not wow. they're not playing aggressive. They're right. kind of coasting right now. They're, they're, they're coasting for the rest of the regular season into the play. Probably even the first round as well because, yeah, I mean, whoever wins the playing tournament is most likely will get swept the first round. Right. Unless the Miami Heat somehow find a way to get that eight seed. I still don't think they have a chance with, with Boston. They're just – Boston's just so well prepared. They have right. one through five. My, Miami just has that – they have dogs on their team. Boston yeah, does not have true. dogs. Miami has dogs, so that's their only chance. If they out hustle them, uh, you know, outwork them, they could have a chance then. Right, and I want to go back to something you were talking about early on the show. I know you're a Ranger fan. I am a Ranger fan, but I'm an Isles fan, so yeah, you know, that yeah. win helped us out a little bit. You it know, did, we're did. making that late playoff push. We might make it. We might just make it. And I'm just telling you now, Ranger fans, you do not want to see oh, them boys stop, from man. UBS. In the first or the second round. Stop it. Let me it. tell you that right stop now. Stop it. The rags are going down, baby. Listen, I, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say I watch hockey all, all the time. You know, I, I follow the Rangers once it gets close to the end of the year. Right. Um, but come on. The Islanders don't have a chance in, in, a, in a series with the Rangers. Some say that. Some might not agree. But, you know, the Isles, 
always got a fighting chance. The Isles play that physical brand of hockey while the Rangers play that little that little sissy brand of hockey where they like to pass the puck around all pretty and nice. The Rangers run New York. The Rangers we'll run New York. We'll see. Long Island and the city. Yeah, that's that's a stretch. Long Island and the city. We'll see. Trust me. But anyway, we got some interesting segments to talk about yeah. today. Let's you want to so transition you, to our first one? Yeah, we can transition to our first segment. So Dallas Cowboys were a little quiet this offseason. Uh, there were rumors that we thought Derrick Henry was going to go there. They didn't even call him. They didn't address that wide receiver, wide receiver two situation. Uh, they lost Pollard. So going into the season, do you think the Cowboys did enough this offseason to make a run, or will they fall in the standings this year? I think it's a problem for them because I think every single team in their division got better. While they didn't, and technically, you could say they got worse, but I don't think they really did. I just don't think they improved. So that kind of leaves me in a spot where they ended the season on a low because they got smoked by the Packers. And now you're looking at next season, and they have a hard schedule coming up next season. It's not like they have any cupcake schedule. So you're looking at it, and you're like, wow. Like, they might actually be like a 9-8 and eight team next year. It's very possible. Yeah, I mean, listen, the Cowboys have always been a very good regular season team. Right. This past, you know, five years or so, they've been top, top of the division. But you got to think about this year. Washington got better. They're going right. to draft a quarterback. They got a lot of pieces they added to that defense. Eagles are the Eagles. You know, I, I don't think the Giants are going to be good. But listen, they, they, no, not, not a cupcake. They, it's not going to be easy. for. I, I think the Giants could have a chance of beating Dallas or Philly one of the games instead of getting swept like we always do. Right, but back to Dallas, I think they lost too much and didn't get enough. Uh, Stephon Gilmore probably won't be right. returning. You're getting Trayvon Diggs back. You have Bland, uh, Van Der Esch retired. You lost Doris Armstrong, so th- there's some there's some guys that they lost that um, right that they need to fill these holes and they, they didn't anything. really address it. Y- yet it's still early. Uh, they have the draft still. Uh, there's still a lot of free agents on the board, so it'll be interesting to see who they go after. But as of right now, I think they got worse. Right, and then you also tied to it. I've seen a lot of rumors about the Cowboys organization with people inside of it saying that Micah Parsons is sort of like they wouldn't be mad if Micah Parsons got traded to another team and they'd be they, – because he's sort of like a, a locker room cancer or something like that. Have you ever seen anything like that? Yeah, I did see those reports. Um, just imagine the package. That they could get from Micah Parsons. If they were at least two first. If they were to trade him on his rookie deal, just think about how much of a uh, I I just I don't think there's a trade package that you could put together for Micah Parsons, to be honest with you. I think think he's just that good of a player. I think Micah Parsons is the kind of player where you know a team's not gonna give up three first round picks for an edge rusher unless they want Micah Parsons to be their concrete piece for the next 10 to 15 years. But I know damn well that with all this stuff going on with the Cowboys, if he's not winning, he's one of the most likely people to be a free agent and leave. 100%. That's how he is. I think I think he's he, like he's been talking about Philly his whole life. I can totally see him going no, to Philly. No, could you he, imagine that, a, man? He, that's right. He's a Philly fan. He loves Philly. No. I mean, he went to Penn State. I mean, I'm not saying they don't have the money to do that, but you never know what yeah, the, I, you can do to I, that's make That's unreal. Money. If that was to happen, I, I think the commissioner has to come in and, and do something about that. Yeah. Because that, that's just not fair. And also, like, I mean, you think about it, he's going to be the highest paid player besides the quarterback, besides the quarterback position. The highest paid non-quarterback right. in the league, I would, yeah. Either, it, it depend, it's, it'll be interesting because Brian Burns got 150 mil. Josh Alan Allen just signed for I think just for one fifty or one eighty. One fifty. It was one fifty so five year one fifty. Same, same deal I think. So I think Micah Parsons easily, easily gets two hundred. Easily gets wow, two hundred. That's a bag. But we have to two hundred would have to be over like I'd say six years because then it'd be, at least because then if you do six years with two hundred you're getting you're getting a good amount of money back I think. Yeah, I, and of course it's a I think it's a fine investment. There's not too many players like Micah Parsons that could also be a, a, a guy who sits in a zone in the middle of the field right. and could play main coverage on running backs out of the backfield and tight ends. Uh, they they keep him strictly just to edge rushing, but he's a jack of all trades. He could do everything. So a guy like that is very valuable. Right. And before we end the segment, I just want to say, like, a team that could use a guy like that is a team that has a lot of young players on rookie deals, so they don't have to worry about being, like, in the salary cap debt and all that stuff. You want a team that's young, that has some money to spend, 
that it won't hurt them to spend big on a guy because they have so many rookie deals. Detroit. Yeah, that would kill me. That would that would be something where and they would I like Detroit, don't get me wrong, but that's just bad for football because they're just gonna be like a super team after that. I mean, they are like, gonna have to deal with some contracts coming up soon, but yeah, but a, a majority of their Hutchinson and Parsons. Yeah, that would be unbelievable. I would. Th- I think the Giants' defense is good. Imagine that. that no, yeah, sounds- that'd be the best pass rush duo in the league by far. Yeah, by far. Let's move on to our next segment now. Let's go ahead. All right, we'll stay in the NFL. Aaron Rodgers coming off a, a, a torn Achilles. Do you think he comes back healthy? And do you think the Jets done enough? around him to make a run in the AFC this year. So does he come back healthy? If you would have asked me this during the last two weeks of the season when he was thinking about coming back, I would have said absolutely not. Now that he has the whole offseason off to work on it and I think reconsider his like rehab and you know slow it down, yeah. keep continuing that, I think yes, 100%. They'll come back healthy. That's not the problem. Two, two things. Can they protect him? And... Can they find can does he have time to throw to his receivers? Yeah. If he doesn't have time to throw to his receivers, then the whole point of building that offensive line is purposeless. Yeah, that's a that's a big thing. They got Tyron Smith, they got Mike Williams. Right. They got guys. Um health. I, I think that is health becomes a big issue. I think that Aaron Rodgers will be healthy. Uh he's not sprinting yet. I saw he's doing everything but sprinting. It's still very early. Um You know, Mike Williams was hurt all last year. Tyron Smith is hurt every year. Um, But, again, I I like the moves that they made. If they stay healthy, they'll be dangerous. I think if they stay healthy, um, maybe they add a Brock Bowers in the draft. Um, I think this team could be very interesting in in such a packed AFC. It's hard to say a team crazy. Yeah, it's hard to say a team can make a run in the AFC just because it's not even about the team itself. It's about the teams they got to play. Exactly. The teams they got to get through. Like, uh, me, personally, I don't see the Jets making a run in the playoffs. I think they could make the playoffs. But once you get to the playoffs, I don't see I don't see them getting past the first round of playoffs. Unless they get, like, a very high seed and they win, like, the AFC East. Yeah. And they play, like, a bad team. But even if, like, a team that they're going to have to play in the wild card to beat the Browns. No one wants to play the Browns. Yeah. I mean, they do have a crazy defense, the Browns. Um, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. but You don't, don't want to play a team like that. Yeah, I, I think the Jets possibly could beat the Browns. I, I don't think that's... Um, out of the question. Yeah, but you got to look at Buffalo got weaker this year. Right. So, yeah. You got to you, you look at um, the Patriots aren't going to be in competition for that division at Just all. Just them the Dolphins, really. Yeah. So so they really only have to compete with Miami. And they get to play them twice. So that's the thing. If they could pull yeah. out two wins on them, they uh, it gives them big leverage on the division. It's true. And there's not, honestly, the Chargers kind of fell off a little bit. So they're not even like in the question anymore. The, I thought at the beginning of last season they were going to be a playoff team, which they yeah, weren't. Yeah, I thought. I, so they're they're a team that they they can't stop getting hurt. Who knows? Now that everyone's doubting the Jets, maybe they'll have a little you know a little run. Maybe maybe they'll prove us wrong. But I obviously don't think that's going to happen. I doubt it. But for you Jets fans, you guys need some sort of winning in your life because yeah, you, you got to be tired of losing. I, I mean, I think coaching is an issue for the Jets too. Yeah. I, I I'm not I'm not a fan of uh, Sala. What's the Sala's name Sala, is? Or they I, don't, I don't know how to say it. Yeah, I don't. I think Robert, Sala, Robert, Robert Sala. Sala. Yeah. yeah. Um. He, listen, he's a great defensive coach. He was from San Francisco. Uh, he brings like a swagger and a toughness right. to your team. Uh, you know, he checks all those boxes out. But when it comes to X's and O's, when it comes to late game situations, when it comes to the offense, yeah. uh, I I think those are the those are things that he lacks in, and the Jets don't have an offensive coordinator or someone like that that well, could do the that. Guy with Rodgers, which was a dumb choice because yeah. he, with the, he was with the Broncos the year before that, and their offense was like, I think it was second to last in the league. Yeah, well, like he was from Green Bay. Oh, so Aaron Rodgers right, right. knew him from Green Bay. He was the offensive coordinator, and I believe he was the quarterback coach there right. before that. So they had they had history, but you know Aaron Rodgers comes in. He he's at the time where he's calling the shots. He wants this guy here. You know Randall Cobb signed. Yeah. And, and uh, they there was another offensive Al lineman. Lazar. They got Alan Lazard. No, yeah. Lazard. There was a tight end that they got. Um, yeah. So it, it's just uh, the Aaron Rodgers effect. It's it's a little like Brady. You know Brady comes. All the veterans start coming in. It's, the Jets are like a, kind kind of like that to a lesser degree. I told one of my friends. I said. When that when all those moves happened, I was like the Jets are like a high school reunion because 
everyone that played together when they were younger comes back together yeah. at the end of their careers and they're all fading out just you know have a little like last run at yeah it. it's it's sometimes it's cool to see though yeah. and uh and it's got to be cool for them too starting yeah. off your career playing together and uh right you all get the chance to to re- you reunite together one last time that that's got to be a cool feeling in the nfl right and you know, obviously the jets might make a run they might not but we're going to take another look at our next segment now all right so our next segment we're going to go over to the nba joel Embiid is returning from an injury he tore his meniscus He's starting to get his legs under him. He's starting to play well. What are your expectations for the Philadelphia 76ers this season coming up? This season coming up or the playoffs? The playoffs. Oh, they're their first round exits, even with Joel. I think I, so. I just think they they have so many injury struggles on that team with Maxi being hurt all the time. Joel is not. Yeah, but they're really all healthy. getting healthy right now. They're I mean, all they're healthy. Yeah, Buddy Heel has some injury history. They got Batum Batum's healthy. Batum? Really? Yeah, but yeah, listen. Bro. These are th- these are key but, guys. Come mm-hmm. to the playoffs. Come come playoff time. These are guys that play well. Listen, Paul Reed. He's playing excellent. He's big man that took over minutes Paul for Reed. for Embiid. Playing great minutes. The thing is with that it's the not Anthony about the Melton's te- coming back too. It's not about the team themselves. It's about the teams they're gonna have to play just because they fell so low. I think they're gonna have to play the Bucks or maybe they might even have to play the Celtics. If they make- I don't think they'll be any. I, I I think realistically they'll be six seventh seed. Could be I I, I think that's what it'll be. And they gotta play the Knicks. No, I don't think. They, I don't think. That's not. Listen, that's not. That's not an easy series for New York. It's not an easy series. It's for not. New York, but it's definitely not an easy series for any of the the Philly. Like, if Philly has to play all those three of those teams. I think that they lose every single one. I, I just think it's hard with Embiid starting to become a hundred percent again. He's got his team healthy around him. I, Play, look, play, look, playoff listen, time. Listen. Playoff time. Nothing else matters. Listen. Everything. Everything is back to normal. Zero zero. Regular season doesn't matter. There, if there's one beatable team out of those three teams, the the top beatable team, especially with the Giannis injury, it's got to be the Bucks. Especially right now, because we don't know how he's going to come in and play off. It's time just a play. strain. Dude, that's it's, that. That could reoccur though. It's just a strain. He'll strains, be fine. Strains could reoccur he'll, very easily. He'll be ready if it's rushed. And, and even if not, even if he's not ready for the first round, Damian Lillard. Chris Middleton. Come on. That's not enough. That's not enough to beat Joel Embiid. It's not. Brooke Lopez playing defense, one of the still one of the best defensive big men in the league. Bobby Big Bobby Portis. He's playing great minutes. I don't know. They got Wesley uh, not Wesley Matthews. I don't know. Uh, uh, the guy. Th- he was in the three, the three point, point competition. Contest. I'm yeah. drawing a blank right now. Me too. I, I see his face. Beasley. 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 Michael, yeah, Michael Beasley. He's shooting over forty percent. I mean, they got they're playing well right now. They they are they have a good they have a it's good true. team. I just think they they're, need they're deep, and they have bigs. They have bigs that once this, once Brook Lopez comes out, Bobby could come in and they could play against Embiid. So I I think the Bucks are still a favorable matchup even without Giannis. Yeah, they are. I mean, the Bucks are a good team, so it's not like they're gonna go into a series and lose four zero. Four one. No, yeah. Every series they are in, they will compete. It'll be at least a six game series unless they're sweeping a team. You know what I'm saying? So like they either win the series or they take it to six. I feel like so they're just that good of a team with the star players. See now, if Philly doesn't make it past the first round, say they're a first round exit this year, doesn't be it ask out? Well, I would, I would hope for his sake. I would hope so. He's not winning anything there anytime soon. The roster's only gotten worse since he's been there. Yeah, I mean, what else can they really do if they don't? They Embiid and Maxi are the two guys. I mean, does Tobias really have trade value like that? Honestly, he did, but it's just dwindling year by year. And his contract is just it's is awful. just way too big. It really is. He gets paid like a second tier guy when realistically he's like a third option, fourth option kind of and, guy. And, and he really hasn't performed very well in the playoffs these past couple seasons. No, he's he's been an outcast to yeah, be honest. That that whole Sixers team. It's going to have to go through a whole revamp once a bead leaves. But I think they should trade him before they can, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, his uh, his, value his trade is value high. is through the roof right now. Uh, you, you see come playoff time, you don't have anything cooking with this team. They fail miserably. Why not try to get five first-round picks and a, and a young yeah. superstar player? They're going to get a player, too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If they're going to get someone like, to pair with Maxi. It's not like they're just going to, you know— Ship and beat out and just get picks. They're gonna have to get a player. Like it would be salary. interesting. It'd be interesting to see where where Embiid would go and what team, uh, what teams would value him because I think a team like Sacramento would be interesting too. Yeah, I think uh, a Sabonis for Embiid trade. 
that's very possible. You know, obviously that's not going to be the, uh, the there'll goal, be more right? of it, you know, right. maybe a Davion Mitchell who's you're playing well. Players like Kevin Herter possibly. Like you're gonna, yeah, you're maybe gonna a Kevin guys, Herter. You're going to add guys in that that you're not going to want to just give up, but if you want to be, the price is going to be high. Maybe even uh, Keegan Murray. Yeah, it's definitely going to be an extensive price. I just maybe uh, I can't even imagine if the Knicks traded for him, they'd have to trade like half the rotation. Yeah, I, it's see, it's hard about the Knicks because you give up Randall at least. But that's the thing; you they're not going to keep Tobias and Randall. So we're gonna. I I think that they could possibly package Tobias and Embiid together, and maybe we'll do like a a Randall Mitch. Randall Mitch. Um. I feel like any deal that for him being... See, like, it's it's be hard Rand- because yeah. we're not giving up any of the Nova boys. It would have to be Randall, Mitch. I'm assuming... Probably McBride. M- yeah, I'm assuming McBride. Probably have to give up McBride. And, I mean, they have, I think they have Burks under contract for another year. No, nah, then he's got, he's got no value. That guy's a bum. Just the Phil Cat. Maybe, maybe they'll be interested in Sims. I don't think they're... Maybe. Yeah, if we're know. gonna have to, we have a shit ton of draft. We're picks. gonna have to see how our team looks after free agency, to see who we sign and like ha- what players we have to you know move around and all that stuff. Yeah, because I know Precious' deal is all uh, uh, up after this year. Same thing with OG. OG, Hartenstein. Yeah, we have to re-sign a lot of players. So, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what we do with this team because. A big a big trade, I don't think, is where this team is at right now. I don't think we're – unless we're trading away Randall. Right. Uh, if we trade away Randall this offseason, then, it's really then maybe the that's when have a chance contraction at, you know, starts for a trade. Getting, like, crazy better, like a big leap in, like, a short period of time is with a Randall trade because, realistically, Randall hasn't been healthy and we've yeah. been playing – we've been playing pretty well. Listen, I've been a big advocate for the Randall, Randall for cat trade. Cat. I think playing Cat at the four next to Hartenstein or Mitch, uh, you, you nice. get another guy who could score 20 points per game. He's not going to want to bring up the ball and be a, a ball handler like Randall. He'll play defense a little bit better than Randall does. I, w- I would take that trade in a heartbeat. You got to think. The Knicks run pick and roll with Jim Brunson, and normally the, the center will, you know, bounce off of it and, you know, roll to the rim. Imagine if they could just, you know, spot up after that. Yeah, I mean. You don't play that, like that normally. Yeah, the thing is, the Knicks, the, the Knicks play a weird offense. Right. Uh, w- what they do is they, Brunson will take the ball and they'll, Hartenstein or Mitchell set him the screen and he'll run to the opposite side of the floor after right. the screen. So he'll either pull up and take that midi. He's got shooters all around right. him and he's got the big man cutting. So I think what they'll do is they'll keep Cat on the perimeter. So say if you have a lineup with like Cat, you have uh, DiVincenzo, OG. and you could even have OG right there. They're all spotted up on the three. You have Hartenstein or Mitch setting screens for Brunson, tacking the rim. Um, I, and, yeah, know, I think that's a hard offense to stop. And then if you got Brunson, who you know is getting doubled or getting locked up, you got Cat. They got to guard. They got to worry about a guy who's over six foot nine, and then you got to worry about a guy who's little and shifty. Cat's possibly a seven footer. Yeah, so I think I think he's, he's marked think at six ten. Yeah, I right. think six ten. He's marked at. Uh, but it's not easy to at power like forward. That. I think that would be a, a great spot for him. Yeah, I love Cat's game. I, I I thought early on in his career he was a little immature. I thought he was a little bit yeah. of a media guru a little bit. But now he's sort of died down. You know, he's relaxed. So I could see him coming to New York. You know, and being chill. I feel like he'd fit the vibe in New York. I'd love to see him on. Hearts podcast with Brunson, that would be something. Cool. That would be cool. Yeah, I know they said they're gonna have fibs on the podcast oh, after the that'll, season. That'll be so funny. I'm really excited for that episode. Right, but if you want, we can move it to our last segment. I don't know how much time we have. Right um, now. yeah, we got some more segments. Uh, we got more segments we could get into. All right. So we got the standings in front of us for the NBA. Uh, there's four games left, about a week into the season. Um, how do you think this will shape up? What teams do you think will be in the play-in and what teams do you think are going to miss out on the playoffs? Well, Western Conference-wise, if we're looking at the play-in, the Lakers are probably playing the Warriors again in the play-in. Which yeah, is, right now they're 9-10. and 10. It kind of, I hope one of them kind of moves up a spot. I don't know if that's possible, but if they can, I really don't want to see both those teams get eliminated so early because one of them is going to get eliminated then. So right now, the su- the Kings are tied with them with forty five oh. games, uh, forty five games won. Uh, the Suns got forty six, Pelicans forty seven, 
So they possibly can move all the way up to the fifth seed. So if it's they won, if they won out. So, so so right now, five through ten is five games apart. Okay. So that's not too big of a league. Obviously, you can't make up five games or four games. The left. Lakers are four games apart because the Warriors have one less win right. than the Lakers. So maybe the Lakers could win out. Hopefully some of those teams lose a couple games. I don't want to see uh, LeBron versus Curry in the plan. Like I'd rather see that series later on. Yeah, rather. we already saw that before. Yeah. We've seen the plane before. It's it's old news. Like, yeah. give us something different. You know, give us the team that we want eliminated in the plane. Get them in there. Put them in there. Like the Kings. No one wants to see the Kings in the playoffs. No one wants to see them light the beam. Like, that, yeah. that's old news as well. So the Rockets are five games back for the Warriors at the 11 seed. So they're officially eliminated. Eliminated. They look so stupid too because they had that one dude who was talking so much smack. Dylan about Brooks. I, I don't know who it was. They had one guy. I might have been. He was like a bench. Player. It wasn't Dylan Brooks. It was like Deshaun Tate or something like that. Yeah. And he was talking Tate. so much smack about Curry. He's like, it's like we're one game behind you guys now. Like we see, we'll see y'all Thursday. They got smoked by the Warriors. Yeah. They lost three games after that, and look at them now. Well, there's they were on their huge win streak. I think right. they won twelve or thirteen straight, and then uh, they they stopped winning from there, but. They were really far back in contention before that that win streak. I mean, they're ten games above the Jazz right now from the eleventh to twelfth seed. So that win streak really, you know, separated them from the the rest of the pack. Right. Yeah. That's um something you, something you guys gotta learn from sports is never open your mouth too early because <laughs> it come back to bite you. Where oh yeah, you really don't want that to happen because that's kind of embarrassing. But. Let's move to the Eastern Conference. What do you got in the Eastern Conference? I'm pretty sure I know we have in the Eastern Conference, but it's it's a toss up in that one. Yeah. Um. So right now, it's going to be the Hawks. Bulls are going to be in the play in. We know that. They're, def- they're definitely in play in. Uh, the Nets are five games back from the Hawks, the 11 seed, so they're, they're officially eliminated. eliminated. Um. The Heat are seven games above the Bulls from the eighth to the ninth seed. Wow. The 76ers are one game ahead of the Heat in the seventh seed. Uh, Pacers and Cavs and the Magic are all tied with 46 from the, from the fourth, fifth, and sixth seed. Wow. Knicks are 47 games. They're one game above them for the three seed. Bucks 48, one game above us for the two, two seed. So, so there's a from, lot of movement from, in this Eastern Conference. Uh, from seven? From seven to two. So technically the 76ers could become the two seed. They're two games, wow. but three games back. See, that's the thing. Like, literally, even Miami, we don't, know, we don't know where any of these teams could end up. It's like you know, you're like, it's like a puzzle, basically. Like, you dump all the pieces out on the floor and like yeah. trying to figure out who's gonna be where. Philly six game win streak. That'd Embiid be coming back is help. I, I told you, man. I told you they could easily end up as a four or five. Or they're, right now, they're sitting at the seven. So if this was the end right now, they'd be playing Milwaukee. That would be. I think it. If, if this is how I think it's gonna shape up. Obviously, Celtics will be one. The Bucks will probably be two. You think with them have not having Giannis? I think they still could win some yeah. games. I don't. I don't think it's gonna really. You don't think them. the Knicks take I them think, over for the two seed? Uh, possibly. I just think you know the Knicks gotta play the Celtics. I don't see the Celtics really resting against us. I feel like they're kind of gonna be relentless against us. Yeah. They don't want to see us. Then, we, then we go. Then we go play Brooklyn at home, and then we play uh, the Bulls again. I think the Knicks go. Th- so how many could, games you got left? Three yeah, games. Three games. We got we go C- Celtics, Nets, Bulls. I think we stay where we are. I, I'd say that would probably be the most, just because we have to make up a game, and it's hard to do that in three games. The Bucks would have to lose two out of their next three. Yeah. Which is not it's not unlikely for the teams they're playing. They're playing the Sixers, who are on a heater. No, yeah. say, say if the Celtics beat them, and we beat the Celtics. Yeah. The, you know, if we if the Knicks went out, we all we need is Milwaukee to lose one. Because if I'm not mistaken, we own the tiebreaker with Milwaukee. I think if, we do. I, if I'm not mistaken, either either we own it or it's tied. It's I th- well, it's not. I think if so, they go by oh, the times five. you play each other. It's five games, right? They so they go by the amount of times you play each other. So if we own the series against them, we'll own oh, the tiebreaker, right? Uh, if that's not the case, uh, they go for conference wins, amount of wins you have in the conference, right? Then the, then that's how it settles the division, uh, that tiebreaker. Yeah. Either way, I think two three is the Knicks or the Bucks interchangeable. And then four, I did think it was going to be the Magic, but I think some team's going to scoot up there. I think the Magic are going to fall off a little bit. I think maybe, like, I can see the Pacers moving up, maybe the, even the Sixers. Pacers are tied with the Magic right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They so, got, so, realistically, any team could be in the fourth seed. We don't even know. The yeah. four or five game is going to be, like, a toss-up. We don't know who that's going to be either. So, 
from no, that point on, is, it's just like predictions. We're we just going to have to watch and see how this, this week unfolds because right. this is playing next week. Yeah, so. playing. So that's what I'm saying. The Knicks need to stay out of the plan. Right. Let's rest. Let OG get some rest. Let, let Brunson get some rest. You know, we we really could use the uh, the playing tournament for some of these guys the, to catch I'm a break. I'm pretty sure if the Knicks win one more game, they clinch a playoff like, spot without having um, to play the playing. See, Miami won last night, so if Miami would have lost, we would have clinched a playoff see, spot. That's what I'm saying. I think so, we win one. So we need to win one more, and we need Miami to lose in order to clinch a playoff spot. Okay. So yeah, that that makes sense. So realistically, we just got to win one more game. Mm-hmm. That's all. Yeah, should be pretty easy. I th- listen. We need to. We're not one more game is not the mindset we need to have right now. It's we can't lose a game. That's the it's mindset true. we need to have we right now. We want that second seed. We anything. We we second or third seed. I'll take any of the I'll be fine with second or third. We if we fall Anywhere to four, that. it's listen, if we go to four, we're gonna have to play Celtics, Celtics, second, Celtics round. second round. That's not what we want. I'd like to see them in the Eastern Conference Finals instead of the second round. What are the Cavs looking like right now? The Cavs right now are the fifth seed. They're uh, they're tied with the Magic and Pacers at forty six wins. They fell off a little bit. Three game losing streak. Um, Donovan Mitchell is back, I believe. I he's so. he's been playing. He might be just yeah. coming off that injury. He is. Um, Something to watch, for sure. Listen, I I can't stand Cleveland, so I just, hopefully they get eliminated first round. Don't even gotta see them. The rumors of Donovan Mitchell coming to New York, I don't want that at all. Brunson and Donovan Mitchell, I think, would just be a terrible matchup together um it's some work yeah no it's just they're, they're both the same player i believe and i i think brunson's better right but we're gonna move over now talk about our last segment of the day the new york yankees baby yeah 10 and 2 to start the, the season the first team to 10 wins in major league baseball what are your thoughts on that um listen this is the best team in baseball right now they got the best record in baseball they're the best team in new york uh, I suggest all New York fans to start watching baseball again because the, the Yankees, are, this is going to be the Yankees right. year. And also, don't but when we say watch baseball again, New York fans, it doesn't mean watch the Mets. Watch the Yankees because that's some real baseball. You know, we got Rizzo, the Italian stallion. We got <laughs> Giancarlo Marisi Parlo, the guy himself. You know, Verdu- he's slugging. Verdugo well. hit a home run last Verdugo. night. He's playing well. You know, Soto's got 11 boys, RBIs already. Opie, I think, has the highest batting average in Major League yeah. Baseball right now. The Yankees are cooking right now. And, and, cooking. and Cole is sitting there recovering from an injury. Yeah, so we, we, don't, we don't even have Cole. Well, well, realistically, he'll probably be around the All-Star break. Right. He'll probably come back. And th- that's just the icing on the cake right there. And we got the Stro Show. You know, we got Strowman on the mound now. Strowman hasn't let up a run this year yet. Yeah, Rondon had a great start yesterday, which is very good to see because yeah, he struggled. He, 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 need, he, he needs needs to that. pitch well for us. And he's pitching. He was pitching. He needs he to pitch well for yesterday. us this year. So I know it was against the Marlins, but that don't mean anything. Those are major league baseball players. Jazz Chisholm's a good player. You know, Luis Arias is a good player. He sat them down, I think, multiple times yesterday. It's very, yeah, it's, it's very exciting, man. Yeah, I mean, you were at the game last night. Uh, what what was your biggest take from the, from watching the game? What players kind of stood out to you, other than like Soto or Judge? What players kind of stood out to you and and, and made you kind of realize they were better than what you thought they were? To be honest, Volpe. Yeah, not even batting wise, because obviously batting, he's been playing extremely well, but in the field, like. He's a magnet, dude. That dude gets every ground ball. Oh, like, I, I, I saw that sliding ball. play he had yeah, going towards the third everywhere. baseline. Like, yeah. it's ridiculous. I, I think, like, the plays that he makes at, like, the level he plays at is, like, crazy. He's, he's a second-year player. I know. It's ridiculous. I, people are, like, hating on him. Everyone hates on Volpe. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, all this, like, hype for what? Like, last season, they're like, all this hype for what? He batted, like, I think it was, like, 238. Like, yeah, okay, I, I mean, year, yeah, the, the batting will come along, but just just to see how he is in the field and and he's a, a Gold Glove candidate just yeah. in his second season, you know, like just seeing the amazing plays he's putting I think out this in the year field. He wins the Gold Glove. I think he actually yeah. right now. I think he could be an All Star right now, at the way he's playing. Yeah, it's early. It's a little early, but as of right now, yeah, he's definitely um he's and definitely up there. I think having Juan Soto in your lineup helps everyone out batting wise because. Everyone's taking notes on how he plays because, you know, he's been one of the best yeah, hitters and yeah, not the best hitters. I saw him stole a base yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, yeah he's doing yeah. everything for us, yeah, man. No, he's, I mean, he's something. Let me tell you, he's not normally the kind of guy that's going to steal a bag, but, no, you know, hey, I'll take it. You, yeah, know? you got that guy, Birdie, the guy, Birdie, they got, who just, like, came from the Marlins. Yeah. He's fast, 
man. Mm-hmm. That guy's fed. I mean, he doesn't play a lot, but like, dude, that guy's quick. Like, they have guys that can steal bags at any time. I saw the, I, it wasn't yesterday, but there was a game, I think, like a couple of days ago, where one of the players dropped a bunt down. It was in, I think it might have been Birdie, but yeah. he dropped a nice bunt down to like move, I think it was Trevino and someone else, second and third. And then you got Glaber and Soto and Judge coming up with one out. Like, that's, that's absolute horror. Another thing I want to highlight. Trevino's been a lot better behind the plate. Yeah. He's Defen- a lot. Defensively, he, right. he, he's improving a lot defensively. You see him, a lot yeah. of balls are not going past him. He needs to look, focus on hitting now more because he's hitting. His batting average, I think, is a zero point. Yeah. I, I, yeah, listen, he, we don't really need him to come in and hit so much. Right. Um, I think him and Wells interchange. Yeah. It depends on who the pitcher is. If it's a lefty, they're, they're going to play Trevino most mm-hmm. of the time. If it's a righty, they're going to hit Wells. I think they want to start working Wells in more just because he's the next generation. And they've been doing that with a bunch of guys. I think Wells might be the better hitter right. out of them. I think right now Trevino's oh, better defensively yeah, out of them. And, you know, Higashioka was the defensive center mm-hmm. in New York, obviously. Catcher. Or, oh, yeah, center. I'm thinking center. football. Whatever, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Catcher. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, Higashioka, man. I love you, man. You're, you're the GOAT. But, you know, times have changed in New York. We're on to our winning ways. And, you know. Yeah. Hope, um, we got guys coming back off injury, too. We, got, we don't have LeMahieu right now. We don't have Dominguez. Like. Yeah, I mean, LeMahieu, man. Isn't it crazy how two years ago he was a candidate for an MVP? Uh, he was the for, batting leader. Yeah, American League MVP he was a candidate for two years ago, and yeah. now he's just can't stay, he can't stay in the lineup. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate. Obviously, there's not much. There's, honestly, for him, there's not a lot of pressure on him now because realistically, we got guys all around that can play. Yeah. So if he comes in and hits well, he's just a bonus. But he also has to fight for his job now because Osvaldo Cabrera is playing incredibly he well. Is. So it's like... Oswaldo finally learned how to play third base. So it's like we have three third base and we got Birdie, we have Oswaldo, and then we got LeMay who's not even playing. Well, LeMay who could play a little bit first base too. That's true. Uh, yeah, he, could play, he could play, he could play. Well, I'm saying just in case you wanted Rizzo to take, right. a, you know, you, you got, you could throw LeMay who at DH if you wanted to give Stanton or Judds or Soto a break. So you have LeMahieu in there. You kind of DH. You could throw him a little bit around in the infield. So it's a, it's a nice guy to have that, you know, he maybe not come in and start, but you know, he's, he's a guy who'll come in and kind of play everywhere. Right. And for the first time ever, I think at the trade deadline this, this season, I don't think we're going to have to trade for an outfielder or trade for an infielder or like be desperate for one of those positions. No. I think the only thing we're going to need is the bullpen. I think, or even a starting pitcher, maybe. Yeah, but our bullpen's but been playing; has been great so far. They have been they've, well. they they've been great been well. so far this season. We lost the wise guy to a season-ending injury. Yeah. Obviously, that I mean, sucks. I mean, obviously, you can't have enough bullpen pieces. You right. can't. You can't you have enough starters. Sports. And also, I mean, it's the Yankees, man. They yeah. got so much cash. Like I know, it's, it's not like you're gonna, you could sign a guy. You could you could have traded for a guy. They didn't. Which honestly, happy they didn't because they're playing very well. They're using what they have. Yeah. You know, they're developing yeah. players. It's coming along really nice. But here's the thing in the back of the head. Next offseason, Soto might he, he might demand six hundred million dollars. He, he might demand six, seven hundred million dollars, dude. That's a lot of money for a guy that can only plays one way. He doesn't pitch. So I don't know. But He's the only guy that gets that kind of money is Otani. Otani's at what right now? Seven? Seven hundred. So you're telling me Soto doesn't go there five fifty, six hundred. Let's say six hundred mil. That he'll he'll get that he from would someone. Be the most expensive hitter in baseball. I get that, but he's he young. is the best hitter. In the he's baseball. and he's, he's young. young. Yes, and, and a team is going to give him six hundred million dollars out there if he demands it this I offseason. Think realistically, the Soto race is between the Yankees and the Mets, just because we're the teams that have the money. It's it's he wants to stay in New York. He's already expressed that he loves New York. He likes it here. Yeah, he's got all the Dominican people here. He likes that. Mm-hmm. He likes being around that. But. I just I can't see him switching over to. That's worse than Saquon Barkley going to the Eagles that is 100% if Soto worse. goes to the Mets. I don't I don't think he the Mets the Mets have to have one crazy hell of a season for him to switch over. Like Especially that. if the yeah if the, if the Yankees having this much success and the Mets are struggling like this, right. the Mets he have loves to. It here. They also have to worry about Pete Alonso. Right. They got to you know it'll be interesting to see if he resigns or leaves. Um, but I just think that the Yankees have the advantage over the Mets, not only because Soto is on the team right now, but just the way the team is built. And, and of course, the Yankees are going to be able to outbid any team whenever they want to. Right. It's it's kind of like the Yankees have the money, so I'm not really worried about that. Uh, yeah. Also, 
there's guys from like Japan coming in to the see. To, I think to them will be next season. Like Roki, there's a guy called Roki Kisasaki or whatever. Mm-hmm. There was like 102. He's like 21 years old from Japan. He's like supposedly better than Yamamoto, and obviously Yamamoto hasn't been great. Yeah, I I was upset that he didn't sign with the Yankees, but, but now seeing him struggling a little bit, um, I think it's hard to give a guy that's never pitched in Major League Baseball that much money. Just because, yes, I understand he played in the World Classic, played against MLB players, but it's one game. It's one game. They don't do series there. They do one game. I think pretty appreciate they do one game. That's it. Yeah. It's like win or go home. Yeah, but I mean, you got to look at it. What other free agents are you know? What other guys are you are, are you picking from? Right. There's, there's not many other options out there. So if you have a chance to sign a, a, a guy from Japan that's you know maybe Young. a little younger, uh, could give you more. Yeah, you get more for your money. Right. If you understand what I'm saying. I really just never understood the Yamamoto like hype because yes, he has nice off speed pitches and, and all that stuff. He has a nice curveball and stuff. But you look at like his fastball, his fastball, I feel like just sits. It doesn't really move. Yeah, I mean, maybe I mean, he doesn't have... it's, it's me saying that, like, I don't play baseball, so I'm not gonna say that. But like based on what I've hear heard other people that play baseball say, they say that his fastball is sort of just like it's it's a nice fastball. It's very he throws hard, but like just straight on. It's a move, really. Well, yeah, I mean, there's the two seam and the four seam. Right. I, I think only the two. I think the two seam is the one that it, it moves, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. But some obviously, but, some people throw four seams and can move. Depends on how you throw the. Yeah, ball. but I mean, you got to. If he's if all his if his off ball uh, pitches, you know, um, you got his curve and you know he throws. I think he throws a slider yeah. too. Um, but you know, all those pitches kind of set up your fastball. So you don't really, you know, need movement on your fastball. So to say, if all your other pitches are, are moving, you kind of have that one pitch to, to throw them off a little bit, but you know, in, in baseball, it comes to, in the MLB, these guys, they've seen every pitch before. Right. So it's the matter of trying to trick them. There's you know, very few unhittable pitches. Yeah, th- these guys they do their homework. They they know what pitch is coming at what time. Um, so it it, it try to get them, get them swinging at pitches that are off speed. Get get them chasing outside the strike zone. Yeah. yeah, I think the hardest thing about baseball is, so you'll face a guy six innings straight, and then he'll be throwing a consistent ninety five, and then his off speed will sit at like eighty four. But then you got a guy that'll come in and pitch completely different. I'll throw a sidearm. You'd be a lefty. The adjustment's got to be crazy. Yeah, you see, you see those that. guys pitch submarine. You see oh how, you see how crazy that saying. is. Like, those you know, dudes that go like the their under, hand is yeah. skimming the mound yeah. and that pit. You know, those that's probably the hardest pitch I've ever seen. The fact like that you could throw like that from such a young, you have to work on that from like such a young age because you don't just throw that hard from throwing that way. Like yeah. you genuinely have to like be throwing like that since like the age of like ten. Dude, I remember. I tried out for baseball eighth grade. Tried on a submarine. No, yeah. Let's batting practice. I was hitting further than everyone. I was hitting bombs. When it came to pitching for real, Danny Owens throws me a knuckleball. That's when I knew I was retiring from baseball, dude. That's <laughs> not my sport. I saw the freaking that ball move three or four times. Uh, I probably looked like the biggest moron looking at that pitch. I didn't swing any three of the times. I struck out. Never touched a yeah. baseball bat again after that. Baseball was also a short-lived sport for me. I don't have many <laughs> stories about it, but I just know it was short-lived. You know, other sports took over, but everybody played baseball. Every, everyone you played know, baseball, baseball, baseball the classics. The, you know, it's the pride sport. Yeah. You know, everyone plays that. Sick third baseman. Yeah, you were a third baseman. Yeah, I was third That's baseman. Funny. I love I, playing third. I played a little. I pitched a little bit. I played second a little bit. I tossed in a little bit of short. You look like a little shortstop yeah, second baseman. But I never really, I never experienced the outfield much. The catcher, not really. No, nah, I, I, I can never even. catch. I, third and first is what I played. I still got my yeah. first basement. Yeah, you look like you. Signed by Mark Teixeira. You definitely look like you have a first basement, to be honest. <laughs> it's, your, it's, it's Unk's kind of job to have a first basement. But, and you called it a mitt, which makes it even a worse. A glove mitt, whatever, yeah, man. That's how I know you're old, <laughs> scraping 30. But, you know, with that being first said. First basement, that's funny. The Yankees are going to win the World Series this year. Mark my words. Put that down on whatever app you got. Fliff, Prize Picks. I don't know what you got. FanDuel. Put that down. Yanks money line, every game, you double your money. But yeah, got to get out to a game this year too. We'll go to a game. We'll do. I was yesterday. I should have done live reactions. There was a guy sitting behind me who was filming for TikTok. He was doing live bets on the game. So like, let's say Volpe was up. I remember this exact one. Yes, he's like 
Volpe's up a bet on a base hit. Like there's so many like kids around him, they're all hyping him up. Put like fifty dollars on it. Volpe grounds out the third. <laughs> He was like, and he goes, he's like, it's all right, it's all right. He's like, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. He's like, he's like, it's all right. We're we losing Glaber. people like, money, he's man. Like, he's like, we got Glaber next inning. Glaber next inning. He's like, he bets on Glaber. And he, it was like 0.5 total bases. Glaber just pops out to the shortstop or something like that. I was, I was, it was so funny. Dude said he won like $300, but I know he hit one. I think he hit like a Verdugo single or it was like or any, any hit by Verdugo and he hit a home run. Yeah. And like. Purdue hits the home run. And he's like getting hype. Everyone's like giving him hugs. He's like random people. He's dapping up. He goes buys like three beers and then he comes back. Starts betting more. He's like, he's like, wow, bro. He's like, I really lost it. <laughs> but Yo, yeah, you see funny. some characters in New York, man. Oh, 100%. Going to the Bronx or some characters there yeah. for sure. But we'll have to head to a game season. But with that being said, yeah, that is the end of this episode of the. Before we go. Yes. I want to shout out the the wrestling club oh, yeah. we're starting. Me and the professor, we're gonna get you the joiner too. No, we won't. We're gonna we're gonna get you the Not joiner. Happening. You're gonna do all the recaps with us. And we're gonna get you the watch. I'm gonna get you to a show. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm, next time they're in at the garden or somewhere close, I'm gonna take you to a show, a live event, nothing crazy, and, and and you'll experience your first wrestling event. That'll be a hard task. If you can get me to go to a wrestling event, then by all means. You did something yeah. right because we we will trust me. So next semester, we're gonna start a wrestling club here, SWF Suffolk Red Wolf, Suffolk Wrestling Federation. Uh, me and my friend Danny, we are both students here at Suffolk. Um, if you're a student here and you're gonna be on campus next semester uh, in the fall, uh, find me or Danny or Professor Carl, and uh, we could talk to getting you guys in. Uh, you'll see flyers and you'll you'll start seeing promotions all over. So keep your eye out and if any questions, come see us. Right, join the wrestling club, but don't. It's gonna ask be me to be it's gonna it. be fun. We're gonna we're gonna do live. We're gonna do reactions to every pay per view. We'll get together once a week. Uh, you know, we'll have cool wrestling theme parties and we'll you know we'll uh, it's fun. We'll all have a good time. Right, and now and Brandon's gonna be in it too. Maybe. Now, with that being said, that is the end of the Mecha Sports Podcast for today. I'm Brandon Miller. And I'm George Gallo. We'll see you guys next time on the Mecha Sports Podcast. Thank you.